Hello, I'm Scott Borders. Welcome to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today we're in Ripley, Ohio, and joining me is Greg Heights, and he's going to tell us a little bit about Ripley, Ohio. So tell me about some of the early settlers here in Ripley. Well, the first settler that uh, everybody knows is, was Belteshazzar Dragoo. He was a friend of Simon Kenton. He lived over in uh, what's now Washington, Kentucky, and he came over with his family in 1794, 1795, something about that time frame, and they settled way up on Eagle Creek, and he has still descendants in this area today. Now, there were two gentlemen here before them, uh, Dixon and Washburn. They uh, were surveyors for the federal government, and they stayed probably half a year in what became Brown County, and then they moved further uh, west on into you know Claremont, Hamilton counties, and surveying for the government. So who actually takes credit for being the founder of Ripley, Ohio? Okay, that's a guy named uh, Colonel James Pogue. He was a surveyor. And the uh, title colonel was actually kind of a complimentary. Uh, he, he had been a lieutenant in the Revolutionary War, and they gave him a thousand acres, if I remember right. And he came here and named this area after his hometown of uh, Stanton, Virginia. And then and that was uh, about uh, 1812. And then about four years later, the name was changed to Ripley in honor of Colonel uh, Ripley, who was uh, second in command at a Battle of Lundy's Lane in Canada during the War of 1812. And Jacob Brown, General Jacob Brown, was his commander, and Brown County was named for him. Now, this is a place that is well known for having a connection. First of all, it's known for its tobacco, but it's also known for its connection with the Underground Railroad. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, actually, the term under, Underground Railroad kind of got its name in, in this area. Uh, there was a slave, it was a runaway, Tice Davis, and he went up uh, Red Oak Creek here in town. And the guys chasing him in a, in a rowboat, uh, they could not find him. And he was known to have said, well, he must have gotten on an Underground Road. And this was in the 1840s, so this was actually before you know the railroad was well known. So we kind of claim the name Underground Railroad as the you know, creators of it. Now, tell me a little bit about the association you have in this town with U.S. Grant, Ulysses S. Grant. Well, he was born in Point Pleasant, Ohio. He was born Hiram Ulysses Grant. And at about the age of one, his family moved to Georgetown. His dad had a tannery business. Uh, it was kind of, He didn't like the tannery business as a kid. He tried to do everything he could to get away from the tannery because of, you know, the smells and the blood and everything. And um, he came to Maysville first to an academy so he could get higher math, I'm assuming calculus. And he was over there staying with an uncle about a year. And then he came to Ripley and he was here a few more months. Again, I, we assume it was probably something like calculus or maybe trig so he could get into West Point. And then when he was appointed to uh, West Point, uh, his name was messed up by our U.S. congressman at the time, Thomas Hamer. He thought his name was Ulysses Simpson Grant and was actually Hiram Ulysses Grant. So that's how the name, you know, was changed. And uh, as we know him today, of course, you know, he was later the first three-star general of the uh, Army. That uh, was controversial because he would have outranked George Washington. And later he was the you know, 18th president of the United States. So we had a little bit to do with his education. <laughs> Now, John Rankin, John Parker, I say those names, they mean a lot here in Ripley. Tell us a little about them. Well, John Rankin was a Presbyterian minister born in Pennsylvania, or excuse me, Tennessee. And uh, he came to Ripley because of the Northwest Ordinance where slavery was illegal, and he started helping runaway slaves. His home was first here on Front Street, and then a few years later they built up on the hill overlooking the village. And uh, supposedly about 2,000 slaves went through his door, none were ever caught. And uh, John Parker, on the other hand, was African-American. He was born in Norfolk, Virginia. And at the age of eight, he was sold by his father into slavery. His, his mother was a slave and his father was the master. And then uh, he was uh, purchased by a doctor. The doctor's sons taught him to uh, read and write, and he taught them how to fish and hunt. And then later he was sold to a lady that had a foundry, uh, that rented him out to a foundry, and he learned the foundry business. And he purchased his freedom around the age of 18. And he kind of messed around different places for a while and ended up here in Ripley and got into the foundry business. He founded the Phoenix Foundry, and he had three patents before his death. And he helped around 600 slaves escape. 
Now, he was a little different than Rankin. Rankin had to wait for them, the sl runaway slaves, to come to him, where Parker would go into Kentucky, act like a slave, and then bring them out. So um, there were supposedly uh, wanted pictures of uh, Rankin in Kentucky, so he, uh, Parker would not have his picture taken for that reason. He'd want him to, uh, you know, wanted posters for him to be uh, all over northern Kentucky looking for him. And... Uh, also, there's the story of Uncle Tom's Cabin. Rankin's uh, boys, uh, many of them were ministers, and they all went to the Lane Seminary in Cincinnati, where Harriet Beecher Stowe's husband was one of the uh, teachers there. And their family came out several times to Ripley. And one of those times, Rankin must have told the story of Elijah Harris, the runaway slave, who uh, was being chased as she was running across the frozen Ohio River and, uh, you know, carrying her baby in one arm and a locust post, supposedly, in the other in case she fell through the ice. That would help her. The posts would float, and that would help her get out. And uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe used that years later in her famous novel. So some incredible history around here. Another name that comes to mind. Tell me a little about Charles Young. Charles Young is a great story. Uh, he just... Uh, make a great movie, I think. He was uh, born into a slave family in Maysla, Kentucky, and his parents escaped slavery in 1865, and they ended up in Ripley. And uh, he was about the same age as some of John Parker's children, and so uh, Parker loaned him a lot of books, supposedly, and we think he might have been sweet on one of the girls, but we're not sure. And anyway, uh, Charles Young ended up graduating the top of his class here, and he... Uh, got an appointment then to West Point. He was the third African-American to graduate from West Point and the last one for about 50 years. Uh, Charles Young uh, had an outstanding long career and um, died in 1922 on a secret mission to Liberia. And those records are supposedly still uh, sealed. He was um, made it all the way to, he was the first African-American to be a colonel, and he was the highest ranking African-American officer when he passed away. And they say that a couple thousand people came to his funeral at, uh, he's buried at uh, Arlington Cemetery. Now, Greg, as we sit here doing this interview, we can overlook the Ohio River behind us. So the Ohio River plays a pretty key role in the development of Ripley over the years, both good and bad. Tell us right. a little about that. Right. It's it's a port, you know, uh, where it was in the past. You know, people came and went. Um, the good part is it was the highway for a long time, you know, the interstate here for us. We, we sold a lot of pork out of this town, and we sold a lot of tobacco, and it was shipped out, you know, way back then. And now today, it's very popular for people in the spring and the summer to go boating here and go up and down the river and whatever, you know, in your boat that you like to do. Now, the bad part is we've had some floods. Uh, the 1937 was the biggie. Um, in Cincinnati, it was 80 feet. I believe here it was about not about five feet less, something to that effect. And then our most recent uh, flood was in uh, 1997, and it made it up to 60-something feet. Very interesting. And, of course, there's a lot of history here in Ripley, and a lot of that's represented by some of the buildings you see as you go through town. Tell us a little bit about the historic buildings here well, in Ripley. Right over your shoulder here is the piano factory, uh, antique shop now. But uh, we had a piano business here in Ripley for a long time, and occasionally some of the houses here in town still have some of those Valley Gem pianos in their house. And on top of the hill there is the John Rankin house, and uh, right to our left here is the John Parker House. And if you go down uh, Main Street here, you've got the technically the first, or if not Main Street, Front Street, you've got technically the first courthouse in Brown County. It's the, it was the home of Alexander Camel, who was our first judge, and him, he was later United States Senator, but he would hear court in his par parlor. And uh, you've got the house that uh, John Rankin uh, first lived in here, an apartment. And you've got uh, up Main and Street, Lower Main, is uh, the Pogues' home and the Collins' home. They were uh, carpenters, coffin makers, and they also worked on the Underground Railroad with Rankin. And you've got uh, on an Upper Main, you've got a couple, uh, three right in a row, beautiful uh, mansions that were probably paid for with tobacco money and, and hemp money and uh, pork. All that, you know, went out of here. Well, Greg, it's been wonderful talking to you and getting to see some of the sights in Ripley, Ohio. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming.
Thank you once again for watching another edition of History in Your Own Backyard from beautiful Ripley, Ohio. For Greg Heights, this has been Scott Borders saying travel, travel slowly, slowly and, and stop, stop often. often.